Every week on Bullseye, we wrap up the show with a recommendation from me called The Outshot. A couple of years ago, I did one about a book of Ricky's, perhaps his most successful book. I think it was a bestseller that has brought me so much joy in my life since I picked it up randomly at a used bookstore in college. I can't even begin to tell you. It's one I've bought for friends as gifts. In fact, it is probably the one. You probably have a book like this, the one that I will buy for a friend as a gift. Whenever I see it, it's, it's been out of print for a little while. Anyway, let's take a listen. In 1785, a pig appeared in London. That's how one of the chapters starts. It keeps going. He and his successors inspired the attention, however fleeting, of Samuel Johnson, William Wordsworth, Pierce Egan, Mary Wollstonecraft, Thomas Rowlandson, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and William Blake. He was the subject of political satires, caricatures, and portraits. Robert Southey declared he was, quote, a fair greater object of admiration in the English nation than ever was Sir Isaac Newton. Those paragraphs, which are about a pig who spelled and did math, would seem crazy in the context of basically any book. But between the covers of Ricky Jay's Learned Pigs and Fireproof Women, they seem perfectly ordinary. If you don't know Jay, he's a sleight of hand artist, a magician. His book, Cards as Weapons, is the foremost text on the subject. The only text on the subject, I hope. He's also a scholar of strange performances. It's from that well that learned pigs and fireproof women springs. The book is 300 pages of bizarre, amazing, and unbelievable entertainers, and their bizarre, amazing, and unbelievable entertainments. For example, Datus, the memory man, who answered correctly from memory 50 questions a night as posed by the audience. Or a man named LaRoche, just LaRoche, who encapsulated himself in a steel ball, then rolled up and down a perilous spiral track with no walls. Or Malini the magician, billed as the most marvelous of master prestidigitours. One chapter is concerned solely with performers who lacked legs or arms, or both legs and arms, as was the case for a painter of miniatures named Miss Biffin. She held the brush in her mouth. One newspaper advertisement reproduced in the book from 1788 reads, STONE EATER. It's in capital letters. STONE EATER. The public are most respectfully informed that the exhibition in future will be this and every day from 12 to 3, and on account of the numberless applications, after the exhibition has been closed every evening from 7 to 9 at number 10 Cockspur Street, Charing Cross, admittance half a crown. The Stone Eater hopes ladies and gentlemen will indulge him by a few minutes attendance as the many visits he receives a day render a short delay unavoidable. In this book, there's even this man named Joseph Pujol, known as Le Petomane, which translates, apparently, as the fartomaniac. It would be easy to laugh at these crazy performances and the crazy ancient people who presumably paid to attend them. And it is, if I'm honest, impossible to read the book without laughing. But Ricky Jay doesn't hold himself above these men and women, or even above the tightrope walking donkeys. He comes by his great passion because he too is a performer. He understands the astonishing accomplishment of the man who jumps off a 75 foot platform with a noose around his neck. The ingenuity of the spiritualist and the spiritualist debunker, even the craft of the fartiste. What makes Learned Pigs and Fireproof Women special is the way the bond of show business ties all these men and women and creatures together by their greatest common element. Whether they began their lives with some traveling circus or in the literal, actual poorhouse or without any arms or legs, they dedicated those same lives to all of us. 
They just wanted to entertain. And in remarkable ways, they did. That's my outshot.